Hey, good afternoon. Whoa, 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 stop the presses. I am so super excited. What I'm about to show you guys is flipping amazing. It looks super complicated. It wasn't. Um, this is the reason your car won't start. Make sure you watch the whole video, and I promise you, you can do it if I can. What even ended up happening was this even started making my MMI work, which only wouldn't work every once in a while. So enjoy it. Like I said, I can't stress enough. Watch the whole video. I know some things are going to seem mundane, and I'm going to say them 10 or 15 times, but there's a lot of important information in here. These videos are made in segments. They're not made straight through. It took me weeks to accomplish this. Now I could accomplish it in probably a day. So I hope you guys love it. I know you're going to want to send me money. I would love that, but anyways, that's not going to happen. Enjoy. And after you accomplish this, I started it right up. I did not have to reset it or do anything. Wanted to say real quick, if you guys want to send me your unit, you can either send the whole steering column or you can just send, send the box. I'll be happy to fix it for you. Of course, there'll be costs behind it. I don't know what they'll be. Just depends on uh, whatever I'll quote you. Just hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair if you want to get one out to me. I just wanted to point out to you Audi guys that are having MMI trouble. Uh, yes, coffee and stuff gets dumped inside there, but this video could also help you because with my situation, I replaced my MMI first, uh, the control board that didn't look that bad, and then come to find out that it was my steering column actuating mechanism was causing me all sorts of issues with the car, like lights not working and stuff like that. And it makes a lot more sense now because this relay that you're, I'm going to show you how to repair actually controls like six or eight computers. Uh, and I think this is going to be super helpful. So I added this to the video. So watch the whole thing. This will make a little bit more sense here in a little while. Um, if you want to just remove the box, you only need to flip the steering column over and remove the three torque screws on the back side. Uh, you don't have to remove the two screws that you can see without the steering column out. I can disassemble them later if you're sending this unit to me. Hey, good afternoon, YouTubers, Facebookers, party people alike. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. So I've tried making this video like 15 times. Uh, hopefully this is the last time I have to roll footage on this thing. Um, we're going to show you how to fix an Audi when your key turns on and nothing happens. Uh, won't turn over. Everything seems to be bright. I'm going to show you how to reset the problem. Unfortunately, I use a very high level scanner to do this. I don't think you need a high level scanner. I think you can just use one of the handhelds or an app or something like that. And you're going to have to reset all the codes inside your ECM to get it to start up. But I'm going to show you why that happens. So for the few people that are going to watch this video for what its actual intended purpose is, if you have an Audi, you should watch this whole thing because I found this on Q7s, A6s, A4s, A8s, I mean, Audis, Audis, Audis. And remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. I swear to you. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to get your Audi to not be locked out, which I've already made most of the video, but I wanted to point this out. I want you guys to watch the whole video uh, before you do anything, because there's a couple, I had never done this before, and there was a couple things that I had did that I didn't need to do, and yada yada. Um, so enjoy, and you guys will be successful just like me, and I'm sure you can do it. So this is my Audi Q7, uh, pretty sick. Um, factory 22s, uh, kind of a turd though. So it looks good, but you know, not much more than that. What happens is when I go put the key in the ignition, if my battery's not dead already, there was many things that actually happened and were wrong with this thing. Um, the battery more than likely is dead on it, so I'm not going to be able to turn it on. But when you go to turn your key on, you barely have any lights, your ignition won't come on, but your headlights and all that stuff work, but your windows won't work. Pretty much most, most things. And I'll show you that when I jump the battery here. So when we got our battery powered up, we got nothing. You hit the key, absolutely nothing. No MML. Sometimes you'll have the MMI, I mean. Uh, sometimes you won't. I'm going to show you how to reset it and there is a particular procedure to doing this.
Okay, so Audi is not recognizing that you have a key inside the ignition. Inside the steering column here, there's some there's a relay that's went bad, and the only way to repair it, at least the only way I've ever seen, was to replace the steering column. But what do you get when you go to the junkyard? You get a used steering column that has the same problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to repair this steering column. Hopefully, if you're watching the video, I was successful at doing it. And I'm going to show you the parts to order. I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, I might not show you the soldering and resoldering because I haven't decided if I'm going to do it or if I'm going to pay someone else to do it. Um, because my soldering skills, much like my carpentry skills, are very challenged. But to be able to get it to clear all its programs, you're going to need to hold the high beams on the brake pedal at the same time and have your four ways turned on. Now, you're also gonna need the key turned off in the off position. That's gonna allow the ECM to be scanned. Right now, if I did an auto scan on it, it wouldn't work, but I'm holding the phone and I can't hold the camera and do all of the things at the same time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my four ways. I've got four ways. I'm gonna hold this and then I'm gonna do the reset procedure on it. Okay, so now that we've got our key and everything ready to go, and turn on my scanner, we're gonna go back and we're going to uh, go back and try to have the scanner find this vehicle. Now before the scanner can find the vehicle, we have to do the procedure. We have to put our foot on the brake, turn on our four ways and hold our high beams. With that like that, it should be able to scan the system. We want to make sure that our key is turned off because your key turned on and you know it makes other systems come on. It'll tell us our VIN number. Whoops. I pushed the wrong button. No, it's going to ask us if it's an Audi Q7. Ours has got the 3.6 in it. So now we're going to go to Diagnose and we're going to go to Auto Scan. And it should pull up everything but engine and transmission and maybe brakes. Um, and it'll give us codes for a bunch of different stuff. It'll take a minute. Now, if you're using one of the little handheld scanners, you may have to clear the codes a couple times. Um, not sure how your apps and stuff will work for clearing out these codes, but what we want it to do is we want it to go through and we want it to find something called the Kessie, K-E-S-S-E-Y, if I remember correct. Uh, that's what is our steering column and that's what our problem is. Our steering column has a relay inside it and the relay actuates everything else. And I don't think that relay is working. Uh, we're going to get it inside, we're going to take the steering column out of it, disassemble the steering column, and replace the components in the steering column that are bad. See, the first one that says number one, and then it says 05, 05 is the designation area for that control unit. So it's the fifth control unit in the line, but it really is the, the distribution point for everything inside your Audi. It basically tells everything to go on. Now I found a lot of things wrong with this Audi and I fixed all of them, but still overnight, the thing would just die. It wouldn't like, it wouldn't have a dead battery. It just had nothing. The dash would have nothing. And I ran into this problem a couple times before, but I've never actually repaired it. Uh, I've replaced steering columns in them. If you got the V8 model of the Q7, from what I understand, the steering columns are real pain in the butt to get out. Mine has luckily has the six cylinder version of it. So it should be simpler to get out. It's a little bit less powerful, but I still think it has like almost 280 horse, which is pretty awesome uh, for an 07. Uh, so once it goes through all of that and it, and it comes back up, we can go quick erase and we'll do that and it'll erase the codes. Then I can, and you'll hear this like, you might've heard it over my mouth running. That means the ignition is getting unlocked, so when I turn the key on, everything should illuminate. But I'm holding the high beams on, and I'm holding my foot on the brake till it gets done resetting all the codes. 
which it is. So now should be able to move the scanner and hopefully turn on the key and I have everything that I need. I have all of my lights, everything's coming on. Now it might not start because my jump box may be dead and it hasn't started in a while, but it starts right up. So that makes it to where we can get it inside the garage and we can start pulling out the things. Now you could technically uh, use this until you get the time to fix it, as long as you can reset the codes. Now with mine not having a seat in it, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get in the garage, but we'll do it. Okay, so to start the repair procedure on this, we're gonna to need to remove the steering column. Um, in mine, I've already removed the lower cover pieces I did that a while ago uh, and we're going to plug the electronics. I'm just going to give you a little bit of overview because I'm going to focus more on repairing the computer inside here than I am the actual removal of the steering column because the V8 version of these Q7s, if this is what you're taking it out of, from what I understand, the steering column removal is really a pain in the butt. Uh, with the V6 version, which is what I have, it might not be so encompassing, but I'll let you know through the course of the video if it was seriously challenging or you know if it was rather simple like most steering columns are actually very simple to remove but this is an Audi so it's not I've already removed my plastic covers you can see it that way uh, generally most steering columns are held on by about four bolts four nuts and we're gonna take them out but first we're gonna undo the linkage underneath the hood down by the steering shaft. The bolt that we need to remove is down at the bottom of the steering shaft right down there at that knuckle we need to take the bolt out to be able to slip that up. And I'm hoping this is a slide yoke. Most, most steering shafts are slide yokes. Sorry about all the background noise. So my bolt on my steering shaft is a 16 millimeter. I'm using a standard um, chrome socket. The reason is, is because there's not a lot of space between the bolt head and the other U-joint. So I think you might have to do that. I didn't try a black one, but. Okay, so once you've gotten the bolt out, you're gonna need something to separate. You can kind of see where my screwdriver's pointing down there. At that, we're gonna need something to separate that so we're able to take the knuckle off of there. Uh, like I use the screwdriver, we just gotta get it apart a little bit. And then once we get it apart a little bit, then we can pry up on it and pop it off. Or we can start doing the inside of the steering column because once it's loose, it'll make it pull out a lot easier. So I'm thinking for right now, I've already got it separated a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and go inside the car and start doing the steering column removal part. Okay, so what we're gonna do, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna start unclipping the electrical connections. And I'm gonna say that there's a bracket right okay, up underneath. So a little bit to the right of the steering column, you'll see that bolt right up in there. Um, we're gonna undo that. We've got approximately, and I'm gonna undo them real quick, four bolts that hold this mechanism up here on. Probably two down there. So we're gonna look for them, we're gonna remove them, and then see what else we have to remove. So to get the steering column out, um, all you needed to do was remove the four bolts that I showed you, and then the one nut and bolt. Uh, one side of it's a Torx head, and then the other side's the nut that I showed you. Super simple and then the steering column would fall down. Okay, party people. So, we've got a steering column back. Now, I didn't pull it out because for whatever reason, I can't get the U-joint to go past the, uh, the rubber gasket underneath there. You'll see what I'm saying. I could probably cut the rubber gasket, pull it out, but I really technically think that it was possible to do this without removing the steering column. Um, and I started a little bit, but I got up inside there and I wanted to have it flipped over so I wasn't working upside down. Uh, and I started die grinding these uh, screws out of here. So from what I understand, I've got to take this one off, this one off, and then take that off because apparently that pinches it in there. And then this is, uh, this is pushed in around here. And then that shows us our circuit board with our switches and our relays in it. So we're gonna go ahead and take a burr bit and burr off this, this, and this, and we'll figure out the screws when we get it done. I'm sure they're just some regular uh, metric screws, I hope. Okay, so these are one-way safety screws. 
Um, I went a little bit crazy. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure if I broke that or not. But so this this time I decided instead of using my burr bit, I'm gonna go ahead. I went and got some uh, Dremel cutoff wheels. So I'm gonna make a slot in there um, to be able to use a Phillips screwdriver. Just want to point something out silly right here. I went to the store, hardware store. Five of these, ten dollars, sixty nine. I said 69 $17. Doesn't make any sense, but it is. Yeah, what I it wish is. I would have done that to begin with. That screw came right out. Super simple. Okay, one of the reasons that you need to remove the steering column back now that I'm looking at it is because there's three torque screws down here. One of them you can't see, it's blocked by that U joint. But if you turn the wheel, you can get to it. And hopefully get that puppy out um, you might have to opinionate it a little bit different so you know you have to move it a little bit to get it up and down to to be able to get the right angle on getting that that third one out of there okay so hopefully you're watching the whole video because I'm not sure how that landed but I took the three torque screws out of the back of it now I can kind of understand how this works um, this is spring-loaded and it goes on to oh, wherever it's at this spring right here and then that pushes down and then down inside there you can see the micro switches that you may or may not have ordered already but there's two of them one there and one there so when the relay energizes it it must slide that over there and then that allows everything else in the car to have power and sends it through the circuit board so I'm gonna explain something else to you when I take this apart after I realize that <clears throat> there is something different now we with do. the unit off your steering column we can go ahead and bend the tabs up to be able to allow access to the inside once we get that other screw out of there okay so now that we've got it out we're gonna quite simply just go up and around it and we'll put some pressure on it and we'll bend these tabs back and then we should be able to take it off like I said I still got that one screw that was a problem screw for me hopefully you used the Dremel like I did and it really what it's really not gonna be an issue for you like it was for me but fairly simple. I don't think I'm damaging anything that I haven't already damaged by the disassembly. But I do want to still try to have some level of care. I know it doesn't seem like it or sound like it, but believe it or not, I am. A little bit tough to do this looking through a camera. So you get the idea. We'll get it apart, see what we okay, got. So now we got the assembly taken out. Can kind of give it a little overview. Looks like we got a couple screws we got to take out. Three screws in the back here. I'm going to disassemble it, even though I've never taken one of these apart. I've seen it on the internet, so I'm all, the, all of a sudden a genius on these things. Ooh. Okay, so with the three screws out of there, um, you should be able to do this now i want to point out something when you're working a lot on electronics uh there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to send me comments about how i should be grounded out i am fixing something that is already broken um yes when you're not grounded out and you touch a circuit board it react the electricity in your body reacts with the circuit board and can blow little holes in it that's a possibility um we're not a uh, electronics repair shop and if I get to where I'm repairing these for you guys we'll definitely do it the correct way but we're trying to show you how to do this at home save yourself a couple thousand dollars if you're sending yours to me I'm um, gonna take a little bit more care with yours than I did mine but um, I'm pretty certain that what we've got going on inside here and I'm gonna throw out the part numbers is these three switches are bad and this relay right here Generally, we're not going to have any of these microprocessors that are bad. We could have a bad electric motor in here, but we know that when we reset the scanner that this electric motor works every time. So what I'm presuming is happening is one of these switches is probably faulty. So we're going to take it over to um, the electronic shop here in town and have it replaced. And I'm going to show you these uh, relays that we got. We got them off of eBay. Uh, I think they were a total of about $30. One thing that I messed up on, I thought I ordered four of these, and I only ordered two switches. 
So I'm gonna have to have the electronics guy check it. I can do this stuff at my place here. If you wanna do it at home, you're just gonna unsolder the relay and unsolder the switches that you have uh, and just replace them. I mean, but this is just a continuity switch. So I should be able to check for continuity, make sure the switch is working every time. And I'll probably just replace two of them. I'm gonna take a closer look at the component itself and see which switch gets actuate, actuated the most, which I wanna say, it's probably this switch right here that is used the most, but we'll give it a visual inspection, maybe a sniffer test inspection, and we'll take it over there and have him replace these for us. Um, just because his soldering skills are a little bit better than mine, and I also want it to work. I want to be 100% for sure that it functions properly when it's done. So that's where we're at. So I'm super stoked because I opened up my package that I ordered from eBay and I did order the right amount of switches. I actually got one extra one, so super cool for me. Um, and this is what the relay looks like. And I'm gonna put up here on the screen right now uh, what you need to order in the part numbers so you can look on the Ebays and find them. Okay, so the cool thing is you can see we got our switches back and they're up a little bit and I'm about to show you why that is. Uh, we got the relay put in, all soldered on, everything soldered in. And I'm going to show you what you get when you buy the eBay style switches. I'm going to try to find another supplier um, after this, but you know, like I said, we're just testing to make sure this is going to work. I'm absolutely certain it is, but... So the gray one is our old switch and the black one is our new switch and you can see the spacing is just a little bit different on these relay switches. Um, so that's why they're raised up a little bit. We're pretty certain that they're going to work so we're not too worried about it but that's what we get when we get one off of eBay and this is what they're supposed to be. Uh, so hopefully in the future we can find a better supplier for these uh, because I'm going to continue to repair these. This actually uh, wasn't too, too bad. Um, so now we're going to assemble it, check everything, make sure it works. I'm sure it will. Uh, these bolts were six millimeters. Six millimeter by one pitch thread. And these are the 35 millimeter long ones. Uh, I think the 30 and maybe even something shorter could have worked. You didn't have to buy the hex head ones. I just did for, you know, a clearance issue. The, the originals were them one-way screws that we destroyed, as you can tell. And I kind of destroyed the socket on this one because I didn't do it, do this one with the Dremel like I should have. And I started using the die grinder. But I ended up getting it out. And I'm sure as long as this mating surface is flat, it's not a big deal. So I'm not worried about that either. Now I noticed during, um, when I took this apart, this flap was all the way back here. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn our, turn our motor to get that back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, we don't want the clocking to be different. And this is the thing that actuates it. You hear that noise when you put your key in, it goes, you know, it almost sounds like a transformer, like, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Not quite as good, but anyways, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that that's all the way back. Make sure that our that we put our circuit board on gently. Install our screw, remove our screws out of here. I had these held inside here so I could um, not lose them because they're small. While I was getting the circuit board repaired, I did actually have someone else do it. And the reason that I had someone else do it this time was because I wanted them to check all the stuff, but he said, that the relay was an eight prong relay and he said he wouldn't have the foggiest idea how to check one of them and he is an electrical engineer. So that was kind of disconcerting in a way, but it is what it is. I think next time I'll go ahead and do my own soldering, do my own work and everything else like that. But I wanted to show you guys that this truly does work and that you can save yourself a couple thousand dollars. If not, you can at least send it to me and I'll save you a couple, you know, a thousand or so. Have, Don't force this together. Be gentle with it. And these screws don't have to be over tightened. I'm only gonna probably put like a 
eighth to sixteenth of a turn on each one of them as I get them tightened down. One of the other things I wanted to point out is on the side of here, notice that the motor fits in this. If, you, if you've seen this go back together, this motor has little grooves in it and it fits in the socket there. It goes together real nice, so I'll try to cram that on there. Make sure you plug back in your electric motor right there. Uh, I don't know if this clip is supposed to be off center right there, but just check that out. And we'll install it back on the bracket. Apparently you need to make sure that both of these go down at the same time. Because <laughs> it doesn't want to fit in there so easily. something interesting to me maybe my screws are too long because this uses the same locating hole as the other one so I got the 35s I probably should have went with the 25 maybe we'll see I'll let you know here in a couple moments also we want to make sure that our two halves go together properly so we may have to bend up on our tabs to get it to go back together I'm gonna to do that off camera so I can do that in my hand Okay, during the reassembly process, a couple things happened. Um, you could probably use the 20 or 25 millimeter screw for that because the bottom, like I said, was also the housing for your three screws that are held on, that hold this onto your steering column. Um, another thing you should have probably done, and I, oh, of course hindsight's 20, 20 uh, bend all the tabs so these screw holes line up correctly. Mine are off a little bit, so I'm gonna have to do that. Okay, during our reassembly process, we're gonna make sure that our flaps go up underneath here on both sides. Yes, I did not put my screws in. I was super excited to put this in and see if it works. And then we're also gonna make sure that the, I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull this off, that these tangs go up inside the plastic housing right there. I'm trying to put that down so you guys can see it. I'm talking about these tangs go right here. And then I'm assuming this is our lock and unlock mechanism right here. So you can move that a little bit. We got a little bit of play in there if you ended up moving your motor. Um, but I think if you just slide this all the way back with your motor before you assemble it, you should be okay. Okay, to help hold the screw on, because it's gotta go down in that deep basin down there, um, we're gonna apply a little bit of grease to the end of our Torx, and then we're able to hold the screw while it's there, or you could magnetize your Screwdriver. Just so you guys know, getting that center screw down there, the black one, was a little bit tricky. But what you're going to do is you're going to raise the the steering column towards you so the U-joint kicks out so you can get the screw in there. And then you're going to bring it down and then push it into there. And if you're using, you know, a tip Torx like I did, then you won't have any issues getting in there. You can see where I put a little bit of grease on the bolt. Held it just like I told you before. Pretty easy stuff. And after you accomplish this, I started it right up. I did not have to reset it or do anything. Okay, guys. So this was super sweet. I'm so totally stoked that this actually worked. Um, I couldn't find any other videos of anybody doing this, but hopefully you guys will subscribe. Remember that if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. God bless. Have a great day. I hope I sound you, saved you a couple thousand.